Good morning. Welcome to First St. Paul's. This beautiful fall weather morning. Isn't this wonderful weather we're having? And then two wins for the Huskers yesterday. Can't top that for a weekend, right? Well, uh, my name is Chad Power, Pastor Chad Power, and I'm um, happy that all of you are here this morning. And uh, we'll start with a couple of announcements. We have a few things coming up. Um, uh, starting this Wednesday, there's going to be a new Bible study on Wednesday night. Ann Otten's going to be offering, um, what's the title of that? More Than a Carpenter? More Than a Carpenter. And she's going to start that up in her office area, which is in the upper education wing right at the top of the stairs. Um, and that's going to start this, this Wednesday and go through the end of November. Um, so if you're interested in that Bible study, um, check out Ann in her office this Wednesday night. Tonight, if you have a 7th grader or an 8th grader, the Oreos youth group is going to be going out. They're going to be doing reverse trick-or-treating and a very unusual scavenger hunt. And, you know, Pastor Joel's the one in charge of it, so it's got to be unusual. And it's a fun night for the kids to go out and do that. So that starts tonight at 6.30. Just meet here at the church um, right over by the uh, Christian Underground entrance over here. And then uh, next Sunday, we will be having our third grade um, Bibles. They will be receiving their third grade Bibles. They've been in session for the last few weeks with parents and with um, Miss Kim, and they'll be receiving their third grade Bibles next Sunday. Remember, both kids' choirs will be singing next week. So if you have a youth that's a uh, child that's in a, in a choir, they will be singing next week. And then next Sunday is our trunk or treat. I think you probably saw the pumpkin out there. Please keep stuffing candy in there. Last year, we had, I think, around 1,000 kids that came through because they were lined up from the playground, around the playground, all the way down to Russ's, through the parking lot, waiting to go through the trunks. And that was one of the busiest times that we've had for Trunk or Treat. It was wonderful. And if you want to have a trunk, please sign up out in the gathering area. Last year, we had around 30 to 35. We're hoping for that many again this year. Um, But please... uh, if you feel uh, that you would like to donate candy to that or have a trunk, please do that. Um, we do have a craft show that's coming up. I think you may have seen some of the signs around. If you are a vendor and you want to sell some of your crafts, please scan that QR code and you can sign up to be a vendor. Um, but just know that on November 4th, you can start doing some Christmas shopping at the craft show. Um, and then one, one other thing that uh, following up after Pastor Siemens' visit last week from the Estonian Ministries, um, if you are uh, willing and wanting to be a part of the donations that we're sending to that ministry in Estonia, you are still able to drop those off at the church office at any time. I think that's all the announcements we have for this morning. Would you please stand? The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with each other. Donna, is that better? Okay. It was way down. Thanks. I don't know. One other announcement. I forgot to say I'm getting this cold, so I'm going to try and keep my distance from anybody. I don't want to spread that this time of year. So um, if I don't shake your hand, don't be offended. Just know that I'm trying to keep a safe distance from everybody. So... Let us continue with the order of confession and forgiveness as printed in our bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remain standing and join in our opening hymn, number 638, Blessed Assurance. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 45, 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by name. I give you a title, though you do not know me, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all of these things. Here ends the first reading. Would you take out your insert for our responsive psalm? Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Splendor and majesty are before him. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He will judge the world in righteousness. That was from Psalm 96. Our second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. You'll find this one on page 959. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you. 
because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For they report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. We're reading from Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22, found on pages 803 and 804 in the Bible. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, that being Jesus, along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to, one, to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then Jesus said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's uh, remain standing and continue with our next hymn, number 807, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
You may be seated. Kids, come on up for the children's sermon. Hi, guys. How are you guys doing? Enjoying wearing shorts at the end of October? It's nice, isn't it? So let me ask you guys a quick question. Do you guys pay taxes? Really? No, you don't. But you know who pays taxes? Your mom and dad and all the adults out there. Do you know what taxes are? It's one of those words that came up in our gospel reading for today. In our gospel reading for Matthew, the Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus and they said, should we really pay our taxes? And Jesus' answer kind of shocked them. He said, whose face is on the coin? Have you ever looked at a coin? Is there a face on the coin? Do you usually call that heads? When you do a fo- yeah. Usually you'll see a face on that and it's one of our leaders. It's one of our, our presidents or different um, leaders that we've had. And on that coin that Jesus had him show them, the denarius, there was a picture of the emperor. And Jesus' response was, give to the emperor what is the emperor's. So the emperor's coin, you're supposed to give back to them. And that's, yeah, pay your taxes to the emperor. But he followed it up with a surprising response. He said, but give to Jesus, the thing, give to God the things that are God's. And that was kind of shocking. And the, 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 the Pharisees didn't know what to say. Do you know what? belongs to God, give to God the things that belong to God. Do you know what Jesus was meaning? I think he was meaning give to God all those things that are God's. And that means us as Christians, as his children. He wants us to be given back to him as faithful Christians. And that's kind of the story that we get from our Matthew gospel for today. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for all that you do in us. Please help us to be your children so that we can come back to you. Amen. All right, here's your suckers. What's the flavor for the day? Too many choices. There you go, good job. Thanks guys. It was so fun. Last night we had a baptism of a young girl. She was almost three years old. And there was a whole bunch of kids here for it. So we had the children's sermon on a Saturday night service. You usually don't have kids here on Saturday night. But um, in looking at the gospel for today, it kind of plays into what we hear from Jesus saying, give to God all those things that are God's. And when I was thinking about that and we were um, preparing for the baptism, um, Hallie Mae um, was so cute. She walks up and she says, I'm going to be baptized. Baptized. So it was so cute. Um, She knew she was going to get wet and so she put baptized together. And so um, it was, it's just so fitting to see that in our readings for today from Matthew and from 1 Thessalonians, we see a connection between what God is looking for and needs in us and through us. And in Matthew 22, 19 through 21, we've read it multiple times and we know and we've heard it uh, multiple times that when Jesus responds in verse 21 and he says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's but to God, the things that are God's. I had to stop and I had to think about Hallie Mae last night and that she and her parents and her sponsors were were giving that gift back up to God, a commitment to raise her in a Christian faith. And that took a different view for me on the statement in this Matthew context today that God wants us, he wants us as his children to be faithful, to be given back to him, to live a life filled with his love. 
So we're going to tie together our Matthew Gospel and our First Thessalonians because Paul writes about that to the, to the church in Thessalonica. And uh, it's kind of powerful. So would you join me in prayer before we get to that? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the day to spend in worship and praise for you. Lord, we thank you for the time to get together as, as your church. Help us to hear your word. Please guide my words and guide my understanding and guide all of our understanding of the message that you bring to us in your scripture today, Lord. Help us to apply that. Help us to walk with that in our hearts and fill us with your Holy Spirit as we engage in this next week, the next year, and the, the, the next parts of our lives that you have blessed us with. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. So when you look at that gospel reading and you, and you see that, that Jesus is saying, give God the things that are God's. First of all, everything is God's because God created all things. But in that perspective of baptism, I started to think, that's what God wants most. He wants his children, those that he created in his own image, us, to love him to build a relationship with him and to walk in faith with him every day and to do that no matter what the circumstances. Now last week we had Pastor Seaman Homer from Estonia and he shared his experience, his grandfather's experience and his dad's experience of what what they're engaged in in the country of Estonia. And back in the 40s, after World War II, the Estonians were persecuted for basically being Christians. His grandfather, who was a pastor, was taken because he wouldn't stop preaching and teaching the youth in their community. And he was taken into a prisoner, as a prisoner into a slave camp and transported all the way to Siberia. And he was in prison for eight years because he would not stop living out his faith, his Christian belief. Seaman brought to us a message of of what type of seed that that planted in their, not only in their family for pastors, but in their community and their country to revitalize the Christian faith in those that truly believe no matter what the circumstances are. And so when I was reading through our lesson from 1 Thessalonians this week, it's interesting because Paul writes a lot of his letters to churches that he's planted. And a lot of times it's, it's to correct them or to help them get back on track with something that they've done wrong or that he's heard that they're doing that isn't really in line with what he was trying to teach them when he was there. And like in 1 Corinthians, obviously they were way off base and he was trying to bring them back in line. But in Thessalonians, the two letters that we see here in, in Scripture, 1 Thessalonians, Paul is writing to the, those believers in Thessalonica that he's affirming what they're doing. He's affirming them and saying, you are doing a good job. If you read it closely, he is saying, you are living this faith out no matter what. And now you have to understand, in Thessalonica at that time, they were being persecuted for their faith, for their beliefs, because there was a whole other culture that was trying to overcome and empower them. Very similar to what was happening in Estonia back in the 30s and 40s with the, the communist regimes. And the Thessalonican people were... Um, that were Christians and converts in Paul's church were living their faith every day. And if we look at verses 8 and 9, it's on page 959. In verses 8 and 9 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul writes, For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, and not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we and among, had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. Let me reread that last sentence. Those regions are reporting to us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from the idols to serve a living and true God.
when you look at those two verses together, those two scripture passages, the one from Matthew where, where Jesus is responding to the Pharisees' trickery of the taxes and what should be given to the emperor and what should be given to God, and you look at 1 Thessalonians, you see that, that there are idols out there. There are things that are distracting and pulling people away from their faith. In Estonia, they were persecuted by a communist regime, a different country, bordering countries that were trying to convert them into and break them down from their Christian faith. Today, in our world, there's so many more things than just a country next door trying to break us down as Christians. And in my mind, that's a form of persecution. A form of persecution that we don't even sometimes realize is happening because over the years and over the decades, over the generations, we've come accustomed to some things in our lives that we just see as necessities. How many of you guys have a phone? Have you looked at the technology that's available right in your pocket right now? Have you looked at how accessible you are by so many others on the other end of that technology that you don't know and understand what their propaganda is and how they manipulate us with the things that they put on their sites or they send to us through the technology. I think in our generation, there's a persecution of Christian faith going on that we don't even realize. It's not a war. It's not people coming in and trying to put us into, into slave camps. It's, it's devices, things that we're using every day that are weaving their way into our lives. How many of you have popped up something on your phone and you're trying to find your Facebook page or, or you're looking at something and all of a sudden this advertisement pops up that you have no idea where it came from, but it's something that you don't want to see? If it happens to you, it can happen to anybody carrying that device around. Think about what happens when somebody sees that that shouldn't be seeing those things and they don't know what to do with it. Think about the secular media. How many of you guys have listened to any of the songs on the top 10 charts? Go to the Apple top 10 charts or anything like that. Really good music, right? I don't know if I'll always, always listen to it. Stop and, and listen to the lyrics or go to the lyrics and read the lyrics of some of these songs that are being played in the top 10. The only way they get to the top 10 is because they're being listened to by thousands and millions of people. But look at the lyrics. What are those things that are creeping into our lives that we don't even understand and we don't even have control over sometimes? But do we have control over it? See what Paul is writing in verses eight and nine. He says, for the people of Thessalonian, the church in Thessalonia, Thessalonica has committed themselves to turn away from their idols and to serve the living and true God. How do we do that? How do you turn away from the idols of the world that are around us? How do we stand firm in our faith? How do we stand firm in love? How do we stand firm in hope to overcome the persecution that's all around us. I suggest that we think about how we're living. Are we living as God's people? God loves us, he wants us. And that's what Jesus was saying in Matthew. Give to God those things that are God's. God wants his children, the people he created in his own image to live with love in their hearts, in a relationship with him every day, sharing with everyone around them. He wants that to be an authentic faith that relationship that you just can't wake up in the morning and not have a day with God in your life. If you live with that authenticity, then you will most certainly have the love that Jesus and the love that God provides for all of us. And you will be providing for everyone else around you. 
And in those moments when you run across somebody that doesn't understand why you're so, and why you're the way you are, and the character that you live with, and they say, how can you live in a world like this and be so joyful? You have the opportunity to share that hope with them. The hope and the salvation that Jesus Christ has brought for everyone. And that's what Jesus, and that's what Paul is writing about in both of these scriptures. They're writing about how we live out our faith so that we are given back to God as his children. Living for others, serving God, serving others with authentic faith, showing that character of love so that when you have the opportunity, you can share that hope and you can share that message of salvation with all those that come into your path. That's how we can stand firm. We can stand firm in our faith. We can stand firm in our love. And we can stand firm in our hope so that we can be given back to God because we are one of those beautiful things that he created for this world. Amen. Let us stand and join in our next hymn, number 685. Take my life that I may be. Please join me in confessing the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the offering.
All things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for the world, the church, and one another. The response is God of grace. Hear our prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for creating us in the image and likeness of your beloved Son. Thank you for making us his image bearers to a world seduced by idols, pretenders, and fakes. Give us a double portion of your spirit so we constantly honor and serve Jesus and show him to everyone we meet, God of grace. Help this congregation to give you all honor, glory, worship, and praise. Help us to give one another kindness, forgiveness, and compassion, and help us to give our neighbors love, respect, and justice. God of grace. Sometimes we who bear Christ's name display such a blurred and distorted image of him that others are scandalized and dismayed. Forgive and sanctify us. Make Jesus' love and mercy shine clear and bright in our lives, to his glory and for the sake of those he came to save, God of grace. We ask that you anoint the leaders of this and every nation upon earth to focus on peace. Equip them to do whatever accomplishes your will for all who are captives to injustice, poverty, violence, or war. Teach us to put our trust in you to seek your will for the nation and to live honorably, peaceably, and kindly with one another. God of grace. We plead on behalf of all who are afflicted by pain, turmoil, or any other assault of the evil one. Today we also pray for Nola Glover and Mary Geisler. Come to their aid. Restore them to wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. God of grace. We thank you for the blessing of the baptism of Haley May Molman, daughter of Kai and Jenny Molholm. May she walk with her parents and godparents on her faith journey as you guide her path. God of grace. And Holy Father, we entrust into your never-failing care our beloved dead. We especially remember the family of Pastor Hokum, who has passed away. Bring us into your kingdom where we shall see him face to face. There let us see his image perfectly restored in the faces of everyone whom you have redeemed by his blood, God of grace. For Jesus' sake, grant the fulfillment of all we ask that conforms to your holy will. Amen. And now let us say the Lord's Prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our last hymn is hymn number 671, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Shine. 
Go in peace. God is at work in you.